This drawstring bag just requires a few pieces of material and it whips up in no time at all. So grab your machine and let's get stitching. All the tools and materials will be listed in the description below. In order to feed the drawstring through the casing, you are going to need some kind of a bodkin. The one that I end up using in this video is actually called elastic threaders, but I'm going to have listed all these different options that you can use. In fact, you can even use a good old fashioned safety pin. Check out the description below for all of these options. You will need three different cuts of material. The first is the main bag itself, which will be 8 inches by 18 inches tall. The second is the casing. You will need two of these, measuring three inches wide by six and a half inches long. And the last are the ties. You will need two of these, measuring two inches wide by 22 inches long each. Set your machine up with matching thread in the top and the bottom and a brand new needle. You're going to take the main piece and you're going to fold it along the bottom edge, aligning the raw edges on the top and the sides. With wrong sides touching, Place clips along the two raw edge sides and we're going to create a French seam. Go to your sewing machine and sew a half inch on either side of the bag. Once you're finished sewing the half inch seam allowance, go to the cutting mat and cut that seam down to an eighth of an inch and discard the extra materials. Repeat that on both seams. Now go to your ironing board and press both seams flat. And turn the main with the wrong side facing out. Use a wooden bamboo point turner in the corners to get nice perfect corners. Roll the seam so that it lays nice and flat and give it a good press. You can press the entire main bag. Now you're going to go back to the sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This is concealing that raw edge and making the bag completely and fully lined. Clip any threads you have and now it's time to turn the bag right side facing out revealing the outside. Use a point turner once again to get nice crisp corners on the main bag and give it another press, flattening out the seams. Now let's talk about the casing. On each of the short ends of the casings, you're going to measure a half inch and press and then fold it in half lengthwise. Repeat for both casings. And now you can set your casings aside. Now it's time to create the ties. You're going to follow the same steps for both ties. We're going to meet the long raw edges touching one another in the very center and press. You'll do this with the right sides facing out. Once you've completed that for the whole length, go ahead and fold the other edges touching one another, completely encasing and making it a double folded tie. Repeat that for the other tie. Now go to the sewing machine and along the two folded edges, you're going to sew a top stitch. For me, this is about an eighth of an inch and make sure you sew all the way down the one side. And repeat this for both ties. Now it's time to attach our casing to our main. And the best way to do this is to find the center of the main along the top raw edge. I use my tape measure. I find the whole length of it and then fold that tape measure in half and place a mark with a fabric marking pen. Now this particular pen does air a race, so make sure it's a pen that isn't going to stay there forever. You wouldn't want to use like a Sharpie or sometimes pencil can even leave a permanent mark. So try and use a fabric marking pen. 
Now you're going to find where the two raw edges are for the front casing. Find the center of it and place the center of the casing directly over the center of the top of the main. And you're going to put a little clip. Now this is going to only go through one layer because the other casing is going to go on the other side of the main. Once you've got one, flip it over to the other side and repeat the same process. Now we've already got our mark, so we're just going to find the center of our casing. And again, we're just aligning all the raw edges. Use those little clips and hold that in place. Now you could also use straight pins if you'd like. These little clips are real handy for something like this where we're just holding a few little lightweight pieces of material. And now we're going to sew a half inch seam allowance all the way around the top, attaching the casing to the main. The best way to sew something in the round, like the top of this drawstring bag, is to use the free arm of our sewing machine. You're going to set your machine up so that you can sew a half inch seam allowance and what in the round means is that we're going to sew one continuous stitch attaching those casings to the main all the way around, the front and the back, all in one stitch. Since the side seams of the main are already attached, there's no real reason for us to only attach the front or also just only attaching the back. Just take your time and remove the clips as you're sewing along. And again, we're sewing a half inch seam allowance. And once you're finished stitching, give your little bag a good press along the top and then tuck in that seam toward the inside of your bag. That means all the raw edges are going to be facing the inside of the little drawstring bag. Now take your time and make sure that this is pressed really good because we're going to be getting rid of those raw edges in just a moment, but we want to make sure that it's nice and pressed flat right along what would be that half inch seam that we created. Now once it is stitched, you're going to create another French seam by tucking in the raw edges to conceal them for another stitch. This is a really great trick when you're trying to get rid of some, you know, unsightly raw edges that you really don't want to see. So tuck the seam up inside, give it another good press, and now you're going to just real carefully fold up only the casing toward the front and give that a press. Now inside, your raw edges are completely concealed in that little hem that you've created and we're giving it a good press because in a moment we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch this down for a permanent seam. Now we're going to use straight pins to hold this in place versus the little clips because we want to be able to get through all those layers. So go all the way in the round and use the straight pins to conceal that extra little seam up inside so that we can go back to the machine and stitch it. Now let's go back to the sewing machine and use that free arm because you'll see how easy it is to slip that little bag right over it. Set your machine up for a quarter of an inch seam allowance and go ahead and start stitching and as you're sewing you want to always make sure you remove your straight pins. You never want to sew over a straight pin for a variety of reasons but most importantly it could do a little bit of internal damage to your sewing machine. You could bend the straight pins, you could break a sewing needle and you could also skip stitches which isn't good. So just slow down and remove the pins as you're sewing along. Once you get toward the end of your stitch, you can backstitch, clip your threads, and now we go back to the ironing board. Go ahead and give your bag one final good little press, and now it's time to insert those ties. And this is what actually makes a drawstring bag a drawstring bag. 
You're going to start with one of those ties and feed it through whatever device you decide to use for feeding your tie through the top casing. Now I decided to use one of these elastic threaders and I gotta say I was really pleased with it. Sometimes in the past other things have kind of, I've lost the actual tie while feeding it through the casing. So this worked really great. Now you're only feeding one tie through the casing on the front and that same tie will go through the casing on the back. Only one at a time for right now. In order for a true drawstring to work, you've got to follow this method and make sure it doesn't get hung up on that little half inch fold that we pressed earlier. Now you want to make sure that your ties are even and that the raw edges are at the exact same spot and then go ahead and tie a little knot. And we'll address the knot and those raw edges in a little bit. Now the other tie will go in the opposite direction. And check out these Fomoye Precision Angle Tweezers and how I use them. These little tweezers are fantastic. Now you'll notice that I'm feeding the other tie directly over top of the first tie, but in the opposite direction. So the raw edges will be in the other side and then I just feed it through the back. So the idea to create a true drawstring is that you've got ties on either side. Now align those raw edges, tie a knot, and now it's time to make those ties look a little bit prettier. We're going to first take our scissors and cut on an angle, like a nice little 45 degree angle. And because a 45 degree angle is on the bias, they should technically not unravel, but just in case, we're gonna add a little bit of fray check at those edges, and then just follow the instructions for whichever method of fray materials you use, but wanna let it set for a little while so that it completely dries. So now that it's had a chance to set, let's see how this drawstring bag really works. In order for a true drawstring bag to work, like I said, you need to have ties on either side. And we'll just pull, just like that, and voila, your drawstring bag does in fact work. You can make them for sewing notions, for traveling, you can put cell phone cords. You can give these to anybody and they can use it for anything. And I promise you they are going to love these amazing little drawstring bags. And off we go.